Hi there, Doug from Tau Stats. In this set of videos, we're going to walk through some of the basics of the BitTensor network. And in this video, we're going to give an overview to how subnets work in the context of the BitTensor ecosystem. The BitTensor ecosystem is big, it's complex, there's lots of connections. But at the highest level, one of the easiest ways to break up the BitTensor network is into the different subnets that exist inside the network. Today, inside BitTensor, there are 52 subnets. But there's no fundamental limit to the number of subnets. Just over a year ago, there was only one subnet. And there are plans to just extend this out as long as there's capacity on the chain for those subnets. But what does a subnet do? Each subnet is a little bit different, has a different task, and completes a different machine learning or heavy compute topic. Um, and so if we start looking at the different subnets that are out there, we've got inference subnets, we've got pre-training subnets, prediction subnets, storage subnets, compute subnets, and often we have multiples of these, but they're all slightly different. And one analogy that can be used for that is it's like a high street or a shopping mall. There might be two shoe stores, but there might be one for athletic shoes and one for dress shoes, or there might be different clothing stores, but some might be dress dresses and some might be, you know, athletic wear, right? Um, so each subnet is like a different shop on that high street. And if we add more subnets, it's just like adding another block to the high street, right? We just have a bunch more empty storefronts that can be filled up with new um, subnets. But when the subnets are full, when the capacity of the current subnets are in use, how does a new subnet join? Let's walk through that. Just like on a high street, there is money being spent. Inside BitTensor, there's 7,200 tau created every single day. And that 7,200 tau is distributed amongst all the different subnets. We'll have another video on how that distribution occurs because it's actually in flux right now. We're making changes on the chain so that that distribution is different and more decentralized and democratic. Okay, but all of these subnets are receiving a certain amount of tau every single day. And on the high street, if there's a shop that's always empty and nobody's going into it and it's not making any, any money, it's eventually going to close. The same thing happens inside BitTensor. So if we look here, subnet 3 has the lowest amount of emission, the lowest gains every single day. So it's at the bottom of the list. If a new subnet comes in and registers, subnet 3 is going to be removed. So think we've got a hat shop and no one's coming into that hat shop and buying hats and um, I register a new subnet. Immediately the hat shop is out of business and coming soon is this new violin shop. This new violin shop now has an emission of zero, right? Zero tau is coming in. There's one week of immunity, 7,200 blocks times seven, where the violin shop can now prove its value, gain miners, gain validators, and gain emission. So you get one week to prove yourself before you're back. If you're at the bottom, then you're back on that chopping block to be replaced by another subnet or another store. So now you're the proud owner of subnet three, the violin shop. And in subsequent videos, we'll walk through the violin shop as an analogy for how subnets work. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about BitTensor, come to TauStats. We're the analytics engine for BitTensor, where you can see all of the data in real time as it comes off the chain. We also have extensive docs and videos like these to help you learn about how BitTensor works. All of the AI generated images in this video were created by Corsell on subnet 19. So you should check them out as well. Thanks for watching.